I've heard of a land of joy and peace and wonderful life. In a beautiful place of mansions fair and skies ever bright, and skies ever bright. where all who obey yeah. the Savior dear yeah. forever, shall stay. forever shall stay. And having been saved yeah. by grace divine, I'm going that way. Yeah. Way, yeah. Lord, I'm going that way. I'm going that way. Yeah, I'm going that way. I'm going that way. And Jesus, the Savior, I adore, is with me each day, is with, with me each day. each day. I'm clinging to him. I'm clinging to him. And never to stray. And never to stray. Yes, singing his praises all, all day long. long. I'm going that way. Way. The glorious new. I tell and sing as onward I go. As onward I go. And that those who are still astray in sin, my Savior may know. My Savior may know. And I want them to sing his praise above some beautiful day. Some beautiful day. For glory to him who died for me. I'm going that way. Way in the Lord, I'm going that way. I'm going that way. And I'm going that way. I'm going that way. And Jesus, the Savior, I adore, is with me each day. Is with me. And the Lord, I'm clinging to him. I cling to him. And never to stray. And never to stray. Yes, singing his praise. Jesus, all day long, I'm going that way, way, I know I shall meet him at the gates when trials are past, and I know I shall meet him face to face in glory at last, and do oh, I believe that when we meet, well done, he will say. Well done, he will say. For trusting his soul, redeeming love, I'm going that way. I'm way, that Lord, way. I'm going that way. I'm going that way. And I'm going that way. I'm going that way. And Jesus, the Savior, I adore, is with me each day. With me and each Lord, day. I'm clinging to him. I'm clinging to him. And never to stray. And never to stray. Yes, singing his praises all day long. I'm going that way. Way, and Lord, I'm going that way. I'm on that way. And I'm going that way. I'm going that way. And Jesus, the Savior, I adore, is with me. Each day, with me and each day. Lord, I'm clinging to Him. I cling to Him, and never to stray, and never to stray. Yes, singing His praises all day long. I'm going that way, I'm way, going that way. way. Amen. You be now, maybe seated. For my last selection, I'll be doing uh, Just a Little Talk with Jesus, uh, page 646. You can ask, uh, page 646, uh, Just a Little Talk with Jesus. I mean, if you have that on your heart at this time, let us sing. And I once was lost in sin, but Jesus took me in. And then a little light from heaven filled my soul and my soul. And it bathed my heart in love and wrote my name above. Come on, church, just a little talk with Jesus makes me whole, whole. And oh, now let us have and let us tell. And oh, and he will hear. And he will answer, 
and now when you feel and as your heart and you are gonna find with Jesus makes it right and all right and sometimes my path seems drear and without a ray of cheer and then a cloud of doubt may hide the light of day day and the mist of sin may rise and hide the starry skies but just a little talk with Jesus clears the way away and oh now let us have and let us tell and oh and he is gonna hear and he is gonna answer and now when you feel and as your heart and you are gonna find with Jesus makes it right and all right and I may have doubts and fears my eyes be filled with tears but Jesus is a friend who watches day and night and night and I go to him in prayer and he knows my every care and just a little talk with Jesus makes it right, right, and oh now let us have, and let us tell, and oh, and he is going to hear, and he is going to answer, and now when you feel, and as your heart, and you are gonna find with Jesus makes it right, all right. And you know it's all right, it's all right, it's all right, it's all right. And now just a little talk with Jesus makes it right, all right. And you know it's all right, it's all right, oh, it's all right, it's all right. And now just a little talk with Jesus makes it right all and no now let us have and let us tell and oh and he is going to hear and he is going to answer and now when you feel and as your heart and you are gonna find when Jesus makes it right, all oh, right. Amen. Let the church say amen. Let the church say amen again. We're grateful to God for all of his love, mercy, and blessings, allowing us to be able to come together again to be able to worship him in spirit and in truth. Brothers and sisters, the God we serve, he's a mighty good God. He's blessed us beyond ourselves, allowing us to be able to uh, wake up this morning in our right frame of mind. He allowed us and gave us a presence of mind to be able to come and to worship him. And for that, Lord, uh, we ought not be uh, overlooking those blessings. Everybody's not afforded to be able to worship uh, as freely as we are. And for that, we ought to be grateful. Um, God is good all the time, and all the time God is good. Even when the Lord doesn't respond the way I want him to respond, as quickly as I want him to respond, he's still good. Even when he didn't give me what I asked for when I thought I needed it the most, He's still good. Even when a loved one slips away into eternity, when I wanted them to stay, he's still good. When some relationships in my life that I thought I had forever are no longer on close and solid footing the way it was before, God is still good. Amen? Uh, so through the ups and the downs, the ins and the outs, we serve a God who's worthy to be praised. We're grateful for all that he does, all that he continues to do. Uh, church, we want to continue to pray one for another. We have several in our congregation who are going through a variety of different things at this, this moment. Uh, we've been hit hard by uh, death this past week and the week before. 
Uh, we've got some transitions. Uh, we know uh, Gunner's left, Brother Watley's gone, and we, we need some members to be able to step up in some of these areas. And, and the reality is, I've told church before, the church is always in transition. Uh, you know why it's always in transition? Because nobody's here to stay. Amen. Uh, it's in transition even when the pulpit has been stable for a period of time, but that's not always going to be the case. I'm not the first minister of this church. and won't be the last minister of this church. The church is always in transition. Uh, people are going to come. People are going to go. And that's why you need to value the relationships you have while you have them, because we just don't know how long they're going to be here. Amen? Uh, we know we just assume we're going to see the person next week, but there is no guarantee. And we wish all of those who will um, yeah, bless them in their future endeavors. And as uh, we have members of the body of Christ that are struggling, uh, spiritually, uh, those who are struggling physically, those who are struggling emotionally, those who are even struggling financially, uh, we all need the power of God to be at work in our lives. And the scriptures say that we ought to have a, a, enough uh, care and concern for one another that we weep with those who weep and we rejoice with those who rejoice. So as is mentioned, we want to continue to be prayerful for Sister Tony and the family at this particular time and the loss of her husband, Charles. Uh, we were able to go by and answer some prayer with him on last week, continue to pray for Brother Carlton, who's uh, in some serious, has a serious condition that he needs to address and currently in the hospital. So pray for his recovery as well. Was able to go by and have some prayer with him earlier this week. And um, we got a call yesterday in reference to Sister Faye's sister. This was a sudden thing that came out of nowhere. and She's very close to her sister, so continue to uh, pray for Sister Faye as well. I uh, send those cards and calls, and as funeral arrangements come up for uh, Sister Tony's husband, we will let the church know as soon as possible. We are grateful for all that God has done, all that he continues to do. There's a word from the Lord today. We want to direct your attention to Psalm 34. Psalm 34, one of my favorite psalms. Um, we're going to read this text and pray you're able to glean some encouragement from it. We're going to start at verse number one, and then we're going to go over to First uh, Samuel 21, start at verse 10 to 15, and transition into chapter 22. You know what? Let's do this first. Let's start at First Samuel. 1 Samuel 21, we'll get, begin at verse number 10. 1 Samuel chapter 21, and we'll begin at verse number 10. This will set up the text that we have before us on today. Your Bibles are there? Your Bible's there, say amen. Somebody told me that the Freddie Fixer parade is today. Well, Brother Newton, you need to hurry up. But I, 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 what I want to say, don't you rush God now. Hey, hey, don't, don't, don't you rush the Lord. Hey, amen. We I'm gonna let, let you nurse on that. Don't you rush the Lord now. He said, I'm not rushing the Lord, I'm rushing you. Okay, uh, well. 1 Samuel chapter 21, beginning at verse number 10. Bible reads, then David arose and he fled that day from the presence of Saul and he went to Achish, the king of Gath, and the servants of Achish said to him, is this not David, the king of the land? Did they not sing of him to one another and dances saying Saul has slain his thousands and David his ten thousands? Now David took these words to heart and was very much afraid of Achish, the king of Gath. So he changed his behavior before them, pretending madness or that he was crazy in their hands, scratching on the doors of the gates and letting a slobber or saliva fall down on his beard. Then Achish said to his servants, look, you see the man is insane. 
Why have you brought him to me? Have I need for madmen that you have bought this fellow to play the madman in my presence? Shall this fellow come into my house? As we transition to chapter 22, the Bible says this, verse 1. David therefore departed from there and escaped to the cave of Adullam. So he so when his brothers and his father's house heard it, they went down there to him, and everyone and everyone who was in distress, everyone who was in debt, everyone who was discontented gathered to him. So he became captain over them, and there were about 400 men. Now let's transition over to Psalm 34. Many scholars denote and believe that this is the particular setting of the text uh, where David begins to give a word of encouragement to a group of despondent, discouraged, debt-ridden, burdened-down men. He gives them a word that will encourage their hearts and their spirits and also empower himself. And we know that these are the words that David blessed others with, and we pray that these words will be a blessing to you as well on today. Psalm 34 and verse number 1, the Bible said, I will bless the Lord at all times, and his praise shall continually be in my mouth. My soul shall make its boast in the Lord. The humble shall hear of it and be glad. Oh, magnify the Lord with me. Let us exalt his name together. I sought the Lord and he heard me and he delivered me from all of my fears. They looked to him and they were radiant. They were joyful and their faces were not ashamed. David now makes it personal. He says, this poor man cried out, and the Lord heard him. And when I was in a state of hopelessness, he said, I cried out to the Lord, and the Lord heard him and saved him out of all of his troubles. The angel of the Lord encamps around all of those who fear him, and he delivers them. This is the biblical concept where we get the idea of one having a guardian angel. Bible says this in verse number eight, oh, taste and see that the Lord is what? Good. Blessed is the man who continues to trust in him. Oh, fear the Lord, you his saints. There is no want or lack to those that fear him. The young lions lack and suffer hunger, but those who seek the Lord shall not lack any good thing. Come, you children, listen to me, and I will teach you the fear of the Lord. Who is the man who desires life and loves many days that he may see good? Keep your tongue from evil. Here's a word. Keep your tongue from evil and your lips from speaking deceit. Depart from evil and do good. Seek peace, and the Bible says pursue it. The eyes of the Lord are over the righteous and his ears are open unto their cry. The face of the Lord is against those who do evil to cut off the remembrance of them from the earth. The righteous cry out and the Lord hears them and delivers them out of all of their troubles. The Lord is near to those who have a broken heart. There's a word there this morning. And he saves those who have a contrite spirit or crushed spirit. The Bible says, and many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivers them out of them all. He guards our bones, and not any of them is broken. He's our protector. Evil shall slay the wicked, and those who hate the righteous shall be condemned. The Lord redeems the soul of his servants. And none of those who trust in him shall be condemned. This morning, I know it was a long reading, but 
I want to speak to you from the time we have allotted. God provides hope for the hurting. God provides hope for the hurting. Those of you uh, who are taking notes this morning, we have three points for your consideration. Number one, <clears throat> life is filled with troubling moments, but God doesn't abandon us. Life is filled with troubling moments, but it's important for you to know God doesn't abandon us. Verses 4 of the text, verses 6 of the text, verses 17 of the text. Number two, the Lord is close to the brokenhearted and will make provisions for them. The Lord is close to the brokenhearted and he will make provisions for them. Verse number 18 of the text. Number three. Life may be tough, but the Lord is still able to deliver you. Life may be tough, but the Lord is still able to deliver you. Verse number 19 through 20 of the text. Life is filled with troubling moments, but God doesn't abandon us. The Lord is close to the brokenhearted and he will make provisions for them. And lastly, life may be tough, but the Lord is still able to deliver you. We have David, one of the greatest kings in Israel's history. We find him writing this psalm on the heels of him being on the run from King Saul. King Saul was trying to take the life of David. David ran from city to city. God had appointed David to be king, and he had torn the, uh, the kingdom from Saul, and Saul wasn't willing to relinquish what God had taken away. There were times and, and opportunities for David to take vengeance and revenge on King Saul, but David had the mind, I will not touch God's anointed. So rather than him taking revenge on Saul, who was seeking him unjustly, he ran from his persecutor. There was something that began to stir in Saul's spirit uh, after David had come back from winning a battle against the Philistines. The Bible says that there were women as he was entering the city, they were singing, Saul killed his thousands, but David kills his ten thousands. The Bible says from that very point, Saul hated David in his heart. He said amongst his advisors, what, le what is left yet but the kingdom? It's amazing what pride and arrogance can cause you to do to other people. So David himself is now on the run, and he didn't do anything but do what the king commanded him to do. He was a, a, a successful military strategist, and Israel was able to bask in its freedom because you remember David is the one who killed Goliath of Gath. David got to the point where he was so desperate that now, Brother Jackson, he has ran into enemy territory. He is now at the place, remember, his name was Goliath of Gath. He has now found himself in enemy territory, behind enemy lines, and in order for David to survive, the Bible said he played like he was crazy. Say he started scratching on the doors of the gate and he allowed saliva to fall from his beard and I can imagine him moaning and, and, and because there was something uh, under Gath and, and, and with many other military uh, 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 regimes that you could not put to death one who is mentally unstable. They viewed that as a point of unkindness so he knew in order for him to survive, I got to play the madman. The Bible says that he was bought before King Achish, and, and the king said, why have you bought this man before me? You see, he is not well. 
And the Bible indicates in 1 Samuel chapter 22, verses 1 through 3, that the king let David go. He's now fled to the cave of Adullam. And while now he has made his way to the cave of Adullam, the Bible says that some of his brothers and also those from his father's house made their way to David. But you got to notice what the text begins to say about those men. The Bible says that uh, these men, they were burdened down. They were in distress. Everybody was in debt. They were discontented about their situation and their circumstance. And these men asked David to be their leader. David was just on the run himself. And now had God his place over 400 men under his charge. What did David do? The Bible says in Psalm chapter 34, now he gives them a word about the goodness of God. Can you imagine this man making this speech in this cave and he begins to outline how good God is when he just got finished playing the madman running from the enemy? Can you imagine him being in a state of brokenness? Can you imagine him being in a state where he is distressed, but yet he begins to recall the goodness of God even in the midst of a difficult time? Bible says that he, David begins to say in this cave to these men who are also burdened down, who are also distressed, who also has debt up to here, they really don't know what to do. But you have to learn to lead even while you're bleeding. Amen, somebody. Parents, as you go through your struggle trying to navigate through this thing called life, you still have to be a leader in the home despite all the things that you're going through. Meet the needs of your children as best you can and still navigate through all the trials that you, amen, somebody. They don't know all those things and that they send in the mail that can be burdensome when you open them and read them. Amen, somebody. They just take the mail, throw it down, and, and you have to deal what's on the other. Y'all on the line today? So, so even when we may be in distressing moments, we have to learn to persevere with the help of the Lord. Notice what David said, I will bless the Lord. At all times, and his praise shall always be in my mouth. David, you're not, you not in the kingdom. you you in a cave. He said, regardless of the circumstance, that word blessed in the Hebrew and the original, it means one to bow down and to get on his knee in the area of worship. Or I will bless or I will praise the Lord. Not sometimes. I'm going to praise the Lord at all times. I'm going to praise him even after I just got finished being on the run from the, y'all on the line today? That's like I started this morning. God is good. Look, look, look. Even when some, some of my loved ones slip away. Amen, somebody. A at least he gave me some moments and some periods where I was able to establish relationship and have some fond memory. Amen, somebody. God is still good. And he's able to help me to persevere and navigate through the times when you feel like and don't know how you're going to make it. David said, listen, guys, I know y'all distressed. I know y'all credit scores in the tank. I know y'all dealing with some distressing situations, but let me encourage you in the Lord. I'm going to bless the Lord at all times, and his praise shall always be in my mouth. When there's a positive in the bank account, I'm going to bless the Lord. When there's a negative in the bank account, I'm going to bless the Lord. When my kids get on a roll, I'm going to bless the Lord. When they find themselves in detention again, I'm still going to bless the Lord because he's worthy to be praised. I'm going to bless the Lord when folk in the church treat me right. I'm going to bless the Lord even when they don't speak to me. It's not about them. It's all about him. Y'all all right? Regardless, look, even when I find myself in a cave-like situation, he's deserving of our praise. 
Notice what he said. He says, he says, my soul shall make his boast in the Lord. The humble shall hear thereof and be glad. He said, guys, come along with me. Oh, magnify the Lord with me. That word magnify means to cast the light and make God bigger. Are you making God bigger when you don't even want to open your mouth and sing? That ain't my thing. I don't like my voice. Did God ask you that? Amen, somebody. There's some things we don't like doing on our job, but we do it to get the paycheck. This is not my favorite thing to do in the world, but we do. It's amazing how we can do other things in other settings. But when it comes to pleasing God, we got a different disposition and attitude. He says, oh, magnify the Lord with me. Let us exalt his name together. I know you're hurting. I've got some hurt here on my side, but he said, let us exalt his name together. You got some debt, I got some debt. You got some burden, I got some burden. You got some heartaches, I got some heart. He said, but let us exalt his name together. He said, I sought the Lord and he heard me and he delivered me from all of my fears. I just, I, in, on the point running from Saul, I done ran in the enemy territory. And before I know it, I had to think of something quickly in order to be able to get out. But the Lord made a way. He will make a way. Amen, somebody. You know how I know he made a way? That's the only reason you're here right now. Because we serve a God that knows how to make a way. Is there anybody been in that life? You don't know how. I don't know how I'm going to make it from Monday to Friday, but God made a way. You got two important bills due and you trying to flip a coin on which one you going to pay. I, I wish I had a real church here or somebody that knew something about struggle. But God has the ability to make a way when you don't know how the way is going to be made. And we just have to learn to continue to trust him. He said, he said, listen, listen, I sought the Lord and he heard me and he delivered me from all of my fears and and my troubles and, and, and this is the concept when God delivers you it ought to build on your faith if he did it before when I didn't know how I was going to make it that ought to give me the confidence in the here and the now I now find myself in another place I don't know how in the world the Lord is going to do that all I got to do is look back and when I look back God has a track record of making things happen I don't know when the trial is going to be over. I don't know when the hurt is going to stop, but I just got to learn to trust God through it. He says, they looked at him and they were radiant and their faces were not ashamed. This, this poor man, he makes it personal now. He said, I cried out to the Lord and he, he heard me and he saved me out of all of my trouble. Amen, somebody. May God ever delivered you before. Because you had some stuff where you couldn't get no sleep at night. When you were worried and you were stressed and you had to go to work and put the smile. Amen, somebody. When, when you're trying to be normal in front of the kids, when you know you worry it all out of your mind. But then over the course of time, God cleared up that situation. God made a way through that situation. He worked that relationship. By, amen, somebody. It was rocky at one period, not speaking at another period. But now y'all hold it. Hey, hey, amen, somebody. God's able to make a way. And then here's some comfort and consolation. Verse number seven, the angel of the Lord encamps around all of those that, that fear him. And, 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 and listen, and, and look, and he delivers them. God, we, we, we say, look, he, he protects you of things seen and unseen. Notice what David gives him is some insight about. He said, listen, the Lord has a, as an angel on guard protecting you from dangers that you know not of. Amen, somebody. God is still my protector when I'm feeling pressure throughout this thing called life. Bible says this, oh, taste and see. Y'all know this, my one, that the Lord is good. Blessed is the one who trusts in him. Look, that concept of tasting and seeing is experiential. L listen, give God a try and you will be amazed at how he's able to come through. Taste and see him, try him out, experience him. Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed are those who are able to trust in him. Amen, somebody. See, when, when you take man's method by, by just eating when you stress, see, after you finish eating, you feel worse. You still got your problem, 
but now you got the bloat going on. To go. <laughs> that, that's all right. Look, you, you, can't, you can't smoke your way to peace. Amen, somebody? You can't drink your way to peace. Sometimes when you do some of those things, you add more to your problem than it. Amen, somebody? You can't keep skipping your way to relationships to peace. Because when you become in relationship with people, listen, depending on how close you become, you begin to experience their problems too. But a relationship with God makes all the difference in the world. He says this, he said, oh, fear the Lord, you his saints. There is no want, there is no lack to those who trust him. Matthew 6, 33, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things shall be added unto you. He says, he said, listen, listen, God provides. God is a good dad. He provides for his kids. He makes provision for his kids. Amen, somebody. Sometimes some of the things and the pressures and the weights and many of the things that I'm going through, God didn't just put them on me. Sometimes I put them on myself. When I go out here and charge stuff and I'm just charging it and then the bill and the weight of debt comes down, God didn't do the charging. Smile, y'all on the can't let me because God didn't do the charging. When we got when we went out and got certain debt and things, we feel the pressure and the weight of that, but that ain't God's fault. Y'all all right now? Sometimes we, we, we have these, but God is able to help us to be able to bear these things. He gives us an analogy in the animal kingdom. He said the young lions lack and suffer hunger, but those who seek the Lord shall not lack any good thing. He gives the example of the lions who are known as the king of the jungle. He said, man, how strong they are and their prowess and their roar. He said, listen, they do go through periods and times when they're not able to catch their prey. And they hungry for a couple more days than they need to be. But here's a comparison. He said, but those who seek the Lord won't lack the things that he needs. Because God is able to make provision for them. He says, come you children, listen to me. I'm going to teach you the fear of the Lord. Who is the man who desires life and loves many days that he may see good? Do you want to live a prosperous life? He said, well, I'm going to show you how to do it. Keep your tongue from speaking evil. And your lips from speaking deceit. Birds of a feather flock together. If you hang around drama ridden people, all you're gonna have in your life is drama. Amen, somebody. If you hang around gossiping people, Amen, somebody. All you're gonna have, and just know, just like y'all talk about other people, they're gonna be talking about. No. You want to have a prosperous life and establish and live in a way of peace. He begins to give us the note. He says, he says, look, keep your tongue from speaking evil things and your lips from speaking deceit. Stop trying to be slick all the time. Well, I didn't lie. I just didn't tell the whole truth. Last time I checked, that's still a lie. And lie don't have colors either. A little black lie. No, that was a pink one. That, that was a white. <laughs> you see how man does? He says, depart from evil and do good. <clears throat> you have to come to the point, uh, even in your spiritual life, and be able to determine what's beneficial and what's not. You got to be able to determine the difference between good and excellent. Man, this person is not up to par in their spiritual life. Rather than talking about them, the question is, what have you done to encourage him? There are too many critical churches that are dying today because the old guard, all they do is talk about what they don't do, and they haven't extended their hand to help. The dynamic is if all we do is downgrade and disregard and talk about our young people, your church is going to die. At your age, that wasn't a part of God's plan. Just like those who came before you had to work with you, even with all of your idiosyncrasies and your ways, you got to do the same thing with the next generation. Or you might not be going where you think you want to go. All we're doing is talking about the book. Titus chapter 2, sound doctrine. 
It's not just about the one church. He says sound doctrine is teaching lifestyle. The older teach the younger. Well, I don't talk to them. They're dressed too short. I don't talk to them. They ain't focused. They as focused as you were at your age. Your parents had to make you come to church too. You wouldn't love God if somebody didn't teach you or you bumped your head up against the wall long enough and you got 10 spunk knots and said, I ain't going to do that no more. I don't know. I don't know why it is we get in the kingdom and the body of Christ and act like we forgot. You didn't come out saved. Jesus still had to die for you. His blood still has to cleanse you. One of the dangers of those who are older in the church, guess what? Pride is going to keep a lot of folk out of heaven. And it's not godly pride. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You got to be careful. Yeah, Ephesians chapter six. Yeah, we, you got Galatians chapter six. He said, listen, look, if your brother's overtaken in the fault, the declarative, ye which are spiritual, everybody can't encourage them. Everybody in the church ain't spiritual. Those who are spiritual are called to restore one. How? In the spirit of meekness. Well, I told them, where's your spirit at? Speak the truth in love. Give it how you want to receive it. Why they ball up their fists act like they're ready to hit me? Because you're talking out the side of your neck wrong. And you be the first one swell up the same way if somebody came at you like that. Mm. See, we're talking about this in Bible class today. Most people don't leave the church because of Jesus. <clears throat> they leave the church because of you. They leave the church because of me. How we treat them. It ain't Jesus. And sometimes they're absent because they don't see him in us. That's not their fault. That's our fault. We have to learn to love properly. That's why I come to know God's not going to send people to us if we're not going to treat them right. Smile, you're on candy camera. And we all have to be an assessment of that. He said, man, are you speaking evil? Are you building them up? Or all you're doing is tearing them down. When you're guilty of not the same thing, but other things. Because you don't live in perfection. Our perfection is Christ, not you. Without the blood of Jesus Christ, don't none of us have a chance. And every now and again, you got to be reminded of that. I'm tired of going to too many churches where there's no young people. And we're still trying to scratch our head, figure out what happened. This generation, this generation, do you realize they said the same thing about your generation? Your parents called y'all lazy too. When they were out in the field and y'all trying to run in the air condition or be under the fan. There were times when there was no fan. Every generation said the same thing. When you go back to Noah's day, that was wickedness. Guess what we had to learn to do? Deal with it. Can't nobody love God. The Bible says there was wicked in all of the earth continually, but Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. God will always have a remnant. But can he call us to be the remnant in this day? And young people, you got to hold on to God. There'll be so many things. There are more things pulling at you today than ever before, but you're going to have to still stand and give an account of your faithfulness. And you ain't going to be able to run on mama's uh, uh, coat strands and hold on. Well, my grandma was faithful. That was your grandma. What they got to do with you? Every man must give an account of his own work. He says, he says, depart from evil and do good. Seeking peace and pursuing it. You know, the Bible says in Matthew chapter 5, blessed are the peacemakers. Are you a one in the church, in the body that promotes peace today? Are you even known as a promoter of peace? Or are you just disgruntled and pessimistic? If they came to me, I would have told them, you don't have an open spirit, nobody coming to you. You're just critical and judgmental. Sometimes your own family members don't want to deal with you. We're called to reflect Christ. It ain't about me. It ain't about you. Amen, somebody. It's all about him. He said, man, you want to have a prosperous life? This is how you do it. Stop your evil ways. Stop giving yourself over to deceit. Stop doing evil and do good. Seek peace and do whatever you can to pursue it. Notice what the text says. Next. The eyes of the Lord, they over the righteous. And his ears are open 
to their cry. That's important. Those who are trying to live right according to God's will and his way. That's also those who are willing to administer grace to those who need it. That's also those who are willing to administer mercy to those who need it. That's, that's not just those who come to church every Sunday and Wednesday. You can go to church every Sunday and Wednesday and still miss heaven. Well, I took the communion. I gave my $3. But you're still ugly in your actions. You're still dismissive. You're still unkind. God is still saying, you don't look like me. You have the habits of a religious person, but you don't look like a Christian. Wow. Why, why? So, so the religious attendance is important, but the actions, they're extremely important. That's what some people dismiss. You got the clothes of American Christians with a suit and a dress and there's no biblical formula for, for wearing a suit and a dress, but that's, that's the Americanized version of what church clothes is. You may have that. You may have the attire on the external, but the question is, what does your heart look like on the inside? Hmm. David's family got in trouble for the same thing. He said, Samuel, y'all looking on the outward appearance. He said, but I... I'm looking on the inside. He says this, eyes of the Lord are open to his right, open to the righteous, and his ears are open to their cries, and he delivers them out of all of their troubles. Lord, you got one who's trying to do right. Lord, you know I'm imperfect, but I'll be striving. I'm trying. I failed yesterday royally, Lord, but, but Lord, give me another day. I'm going to try to do better. Lord, you know how my mouth get when some, some people say certain things. You know, it's almost like a trigger effect. Lord, hold my tongue. Huh? Help, help, help me to, to not look like the old me, but help me to be a reflector of you. Amen. See, they, they may be glad they don't know the old me, but they might be scared to sit beside me. <laughs> but, but, but Lord, help me to look like you going forward. Lord, the grace that, that you've extended to me that I did not deserve, help me to administer that to others. People who are guilty, they need mercy just like I needed it. And sometimes there are things we know that we're doing wrong, and we still do it. That's called malintent. That's called an intentional act. That's a greater time in the area of jurisprudence of the law. Look, the penalty is stiffer. And sometimes it's premeditated. Carries a greater penalty under the, the course of the law. But guess what? When we mess up that way and we've done that intentional act, we already premeditated what we're going to do. Guess what? We're looking for God to be gracious. We're looking for God, his, his mercy on God, please, one, one more time. But then somebody's going to do something to offend us. And the question is, are you going to extend what God gave to you? Wow. The church will be a beautiful place if we just look like God. And that's what we're striving to do. You, you ought not want to look like you anymore. Amen. That's how we tear the church up, looking like yourself. Down on me, up in here. I turn this out. Let me get on the phone. Let me call my cousin, Bam Bam, and them. Let me. Please don't come shoot up the church. That's not what Jesus will have you to do. That's what you want. <laughs> Lord, help us to not look like ourselves. Help us to look like you. We're not going to win nobody to Christ looking like ourselves, Lord. Help us to look like you. Notice this, the Bible says this, those who are going through, the Lord is near those who have a broken heart. Man, I don't know about you, but boy, that's a good word right there. He's close. You know what? <clears throat> Concept is not just proximity, that he's attentive to those who are hurting. And we got to be mindful. It's easy to cast judgments when you don't know what people are dealing with in their life. I've learned. 
sitting in this seat. You don't know what people are dealing with at home. Some people are under the threat of an abusive spouse. And they got to leave early. Or it's something to pay when they get home. That's not everybody's situation. But that's what some people deal with. But guess what? God knows. And you don't have to sit as the auditor of their life because you're not God. Joseph, when it came to his brothers, you remember a, a question that he posed, do I stand in the place of God? Guess what? Some church members need to be reminded of something. You ain't God. Stop acting like it. God is so big, there's nobody who can take his place. Y'all on the line today? The elders ain't God. We don't have none of them. Deacons ain't God. Don't have none of them. Look, the preacher, he ain't God. Amen, somebody. The brothers, they ain't God. The sisters, they ain't God. The sisters said more amens than the brothers did. Y'all ain't God neither. Guess what I've come to find out? Wherever group that you point out, we all need him. That's what I know is true. He says, he's near those who have a broken heart. I don't know what you're dealing with today. We all dealing with something. He says, and such is saved those who have a crushed spirit. He said, many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord, he's able to deliver us out of them all. We all going through. He said, listen, you faithful, you righteous. Guess what he said about your afflictions and your troubles and your difficult? You're going to have a lot of them. He said, listen, you're going to be laden with some stuff that's going to help your prayer life to be strong. <laughs> All I'm trying to do is do right. I'm trying to model, be the best example I can be to my family, for my kids. But why am I dealing with this? Why the car going up right now? Why, why I'm having trouble with the mortgage right now? Why am my child not acting right in school right now? Why, 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 why I got to lose a loved one right now? Lord, you know I need them. They, they was my baby. Why? They was my baby. Why, why, why is this happening now? Why is, the, why is the plant closing now? Why? Many are the afflictions of the righteous. But notice this, God still has the ability to deliver. You know, I know why. That's why, because I'm looking at you now. That's where the word salvation comes from, to read the word so to read, which means to be delivered from. You only here today because God delivered you from some things. Amen. Bad relationships, difficult jobs, family strength. God's delivered you, man. You could be in the same prison that sometimes you see your other family members in. But God delivered you, gave you a different mind. So you're not dealing with some of the, amen, somebody? God has delivered you. He guards the bones of the, bone, all the bones of them uh, so that they're not broken. That's a, a sign of God's protection. Then those, he says, evil shall slay the wicked and those who hate the righteous shall be condemned. Yes, listen, listen. Those who hate on you, leave your haters to the Lord. You do your fighting on your knees now. Put your brass knuckles away. Amen, somebody. All I got to do is get to my trunk. All I got to do is get to my trunk. Oh, my God. Yeah. No, 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 no. Leave them to the Lord. <clears throat> See, man makes the wrong judgment all the time. Because all we can do is, is judge on externals. And see, just because a person come to every service don't mean they're faithful to the Lord. See, they can have the attendance right, but their heart not be right. They got a bad attitude every time they come. That, that doesn't require faithfulness. That, 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 faith, dependable, reliable. God, don't sign me up for that. I ain't doing that. I ain't. They going to pay me to do that? that psh, they better be glad I'm coming. I'm the gift. That's how some of y'all be. <laughs> and you only woke up because God said so. I got to change my disposition before a holy God. The Lord redeems the soul of his servants. And none of those who trust in him shall be condemned. The Bible says, Romans 8, verse number 1, There is therefore now no condemnation to them that are in Christ Jesus. If you don't know Jesus in the parting of your sins, you need to come to get to know him. You need to come in the right relationship with him. He's calling you. God provides hope for those who are hurting. 
when David was given this speech today, at this particular time in 1 Samuel 21 and 22, do you think he was going through some hurtful emotions? When he was declared king by Samuel, but yet he can't take his post because the current king don't want to relinquish the kingdom? but yet has sought his life, but yet David is now taking a position, I can kill him, but I'm not going to do it. Because these guys are knowing. So rather than me to have a face-off with the king, I'll be on the run. David, you was in this city. Now you're in another city. Now you're behind enemy lines, and now you find yourself in a cave giving a speech to a other group of beat-up men at this particular time. You don't think he was hurting? But he still declared the goodness of God in the midst of the difficult, I will praise or bless the Lord all times. His praise is always going to be in my mouth. In the good and even in the bad. That's where we got to get as children of God. It's easy to serve the Lord when everything's going well. Grades are good positive in the bank account, just got a promotion, relationship going well, kids doing good. Praise the Lord. God is good. But what about when the adverse come? I'll be back when I get myself together. Now you start talking like the world. Many are the afflictions. Of, the Bible tell us that. That's why you need all the encouragement you get can get to stay on that righteous track. Because we got a part of us in our flesh dwells no good thing. Don't want to do right. <laughs> Amen. That's from the older folk to the younger folk. You still have some I don't want to do right in you. Why? Because the Bible says so. And we got to fight that every day. But if we want to be a people that's pleasing to God, you got to do what God says. You come to him by hearing the gospel message, how Jesus died, he was buried, he rose again the third day according to the scripture. Be willing to believe that same message. Be willing to repent of your sins, which means makes a change of mind, which then leads to a change of action. I've been living for me, and now I'm going to surrender to the Lord. Be willing to confess, I believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God, just like the eunuch did in Acts chapter 8. And be willing <clears throat> to be baptized in water today for the remission, for the forgiveness of your sins. Without baptism, friend, you still in your sin. You said, I've never heard that before. Jesus said, Mark 16, 16, he that believes and is baptized shall be saved. He that believeth not will be condemned. Bible says, Acts 22, 16, arise, be baptized, washing away your sins, calling or doing the will of God. If you want the salvation that God offers, you have to do what he says, just like he says. it. God still provides hope for those who are hurting. David was hurting, but yet he stood on the principles of God. He still was able to declare the goodness of God, even at a time of in-between. Y'all all right? We're about to stand and sing the Savior's invitation. If you are uh, new and you're uh, not a member of the body of Christ, you haven't been baptized for the remission of your sins, we ask that you come forward and we'll baptize you today. If you're a member of the body of Christ, you have a particular prayer request, you stand and make that known, and we'll take your request at that time. Let us together stand and let us sing. Are you washed in the blood? Yeah. Have you been to, to Jesus, Jesus for the cleansing power? Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? Are you fully trusted in his grace? This hour, are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? Are you washed in the blood, in the blood, in the soul cleansing blood of the Lamb? Are your garments spotless? Are they white as snow? Are you washed in the blood? of the Lamb. Are you walking daily by the Savior's side? Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? Do you rest each moment in the crucified? Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? Oh, are you washed you are in, in the blood, in the blood, in the soul cleansing blood of the Lamb? Are 
are your garments spotless. spotless are they white as snow are you washed in the blood of the land are you washed you washed in, in the blood, blood in the blood in the soul cleansing blood of the lamb are your garments spotless are they white as snow are you washed in the blood of the lamb